All right, it's day two in Austin, and I just got done doing a podcast with Texas Poker Experience. It was such a great time. I love Craig and Caitlin, they are awesome. Now I'm back at 52 Social for a meetup game. It's gonna go for a couple hours, and then we're starting my favorite part, which is the bounty tournament. $5,200 guarantee, $200 bounty on my head. So I hope to see some of you guys here. In one of my very first playable hands, I look down at pocket fives under the gun one and I raise it up to $15. The small blind calls and Mr. Ryan DePaulo calls in the big blind, so we're going three ways to a flop. The flop is 369 with two diamonds. They check it over to me and on this board, pocket fives can be good a decent amount of the time. I don't exactly have range advantage, but I am kind of at the bottom of my range, so I decide to bet $35. Only Ryan calls, so we head to a turn card. The turn is the eight of hearts. He checks it over to me again and this card is not great for me. I could continue barreling on some Broadway cards and put pressure on a lot of his medium strength holdings, but on this card, I think I'm gonna elect to check and try to get to a showdown at this point, so I do check and we head to a river card, which is the king of diamonds. So it does bring in the front door flush. Ryan decides to lead into me on the river for $100. My hand has no blocking properties and it's probably a terrible bluff catcher in this spot. So I decide to make the fold and move on to the next hand. So we lose about $55 in our first hand. In this hand, I look down at eight seven of hearts under the gun, and this is definitely gonna be a hand at the bottom of my opening range. So I raise it up and make it $15 to go. It folds around to a gentleman in middle position who decides to put in the three bet and makes it $40. It folds back around to me, and for this price, I'm happy to peel here, even though we're out of position, and let's see a flop. The flop is Jack nine king with one heart. I check it over to him as I would do with all of my holdings, and he decides to check back. The turn is a really bad card as we could have maybe done some things on some better turn cards, but this card specifically, we're gonna check it over to him. We check and sure enough, he does fire a bet of $50 and we're just gonna let this hand go and live to see another day. In this hand, I didn't capture the beginning, but there was a limp in the hijack and I'm next to act. I look down at pocket eights. I raise it up and make it $20. The small blind calls, the big blind calls, and the original limper calls. So we're going four ways to a flop. The flop is deuce four four with two clubs. It checks around to me and I decide to put out a bet of $50. The big blind calls and the rest of them fold. So we're heading to a turn card. The turn is the five of clubs, bringing in the front door flush and a possible straight. He checks and I decide to check it back. The river is an offsuit jack and he checks it over to me again. I think I can go for some thin value here and get called by a worse pair. So I put out a bet of $75. He snap calls, I flip over my hand and he shows pocket nines. So we get a little value owned there, but I've been trying to get better at going for thin value. And in this case, it didn't work out. So after losing those first three hands I played, I was down a couple hundred dollars at this point, so I decided to top up. So I topped back up to $600, and in this hand, stacks are 600 effective. In this hand, the straddle to $10 was on under the gun, and there was four callers. I looked down at pocket aces in the big blind, and I'm gonna size up here quite a bit since there's a lot of dead money out there and a lot of players that I wanna thin the field against, so I make it $70. The button calls and the small blind calls, so we're going three ways to a flop and I've got the rockets. The flop is 863 with two diamonds. I have the ace of diamonds in my hand, which is nice. The small blind checks and I put out a C bet of $125. Only the button makes the call, so we're headed to a turn card. At this moment, I'm trying to kind of understand what his range might be here. He didn't raise pre-flop, so he doesn't really ever have pocket kings, queens, jacks, or tens realistically, but he can have some 8x with a diamond in it, possibly even a hand like 10-8, 7-8 suited, hands like that. So I'm gonna continue going for value and try to go for as much value as I possibly can. And we have the ace of diamonds. Even if we face aggression, we can still continue with this hand. So I decide to put out a bet and I make it $220. 
our opponent makes the call again so now we're heading to a river the river is a seemingly good card for us it's the deuce of hearts so now any two pair he had is counterfeited i would imagine any of his sets we would have heard from earlier in the hand he would have raised so at this point i'm pretty confident i have the best hand and i want to go for max value so i say the two magical words all in as soon as i don't get snap called i know i have the best hand at this point my opponent tanked for probably well over three minutes and then he finally puts in the call and I show my hand. He says those relieving words, nice hand, and I scoop a nice monster pot. He later told me that he had pocket tens. So we definitely got max value on this hand and I'm so happy that we're about to end this session on a really awesome note. In this hand, there's a straddle under the gun to $10. Next to him makes the call and it folds around to the guy on my right and he makes the call and I look down at pocket jacks. I'm gonna size up here again with all this dead money in the pot and we want to get this pot heads up if we can so I make it $60. Joey the mush makes the fold and has some words for me <laughs> and the rest of them fold as well so we pick up some dead money without having to see a flop with pocket jacks. Pretty nice. All right, cashed out here because I'm getting ready to jump in the tournament. I was in the game for 1200, so I had to reload after that bomb pot, and I cashed out with 1323 for a modest profit, so about a $120 profit, which isn't bad. So, all right, well, you all know I'm excited for this tournament because I love tournaments. So, here we go in my element. Let's see if we can run up a stack. So in one of the very first hands I played, blinds are 100-200 and stacks are 20,000 effective. There's four players who limped in front of me and I'm in the small blind with king jack offsuit. There's no real incentive for me to raise this hand, especially early on in a tournament where players just don't fold a lot and we're in the small blind out of position, so I decide to limp. The big blind checks his option, so we're going six ways to a flop. The flop is jack 6-9 with two diamonds. I flop a very good hand here against multiple players, so I want to bet and thin the field, so I put out a bet of 500. Only the under the gun limper calls, so we're going heads up to a turn card. The turn is the ace of hearts. I can definitely start checking on this card, but I still think we can get value from flush draws, straight draws, and worse jacks than ours, especially from an under the gun limper. Although sometimes he will have some suited wheel aces. So I decided to continue the betting lead, even though when the ace comes, we're kind of in the middle of our range now. I put out a bet of 1200. He calls so we're heading to a river card. The river is not a great card. It's a seven of diamonds. Now I'm gonna go into check call mode, depending on his sizing, but hopefully we can just get to showdown. I check and under the gun fires a bet of 4,000. I don't really want a bluff catch for this size as so many draws and so many hands improve on this river card. So I do decide to make the fold for this pretty big bet and he indeed does flip over a flush. So I avoid paying him off on the river. All right, this hand was a really fun one and a way for me to kind of start implementing all the things that I've been learning lately. So I'm under the gun and I look down at the beautiful ace king of hearts and I raise it up to 600. The big blind Annie doesn't kick in until level 1000, 2000. So I think it's perfectly fine to go 3x sizing here. There's one caller in middle position and then the button decides to raise to 2600. I think this is a great spot for me to put in a four bet as it puts the person in middle position in a really tough spot and the button pretty much can't continue unless he has a very strong hand and if he ends up jamming we're happy to call off here and either be flipping or have him crushed and accumulate a lot of chips in this turbo tournament. So I decide to put in the 4 bet and I make it 7,600. He doesn't think very long at all before putting in the fold so we pick up a lot of chips without seeing a flop in a really nice spot. In this hand, blinds are 200-400 and we're about 20,000 effective. It folds to me in the hijack and I look down at pocket nines so I raise it up to a thousand. Only the big blind calls so we're going heads up to a flop. 
The flop is ace, queen, 10 with two diamonds. He checks it over to me and we have a few options here. Usually we should be betting a bigger size here, but I elected to put in a C bet of 500 as our opponent's gonna fold out a lot of hands that miss this flop. So he does indeed put in the fold. Although after studying these spots more, betting about four big blinds in this spot would have been the optimal play. In this hand, blinds are 300, 600, and effective stacks are about 20,000, which is about 35 big blinds. There's a raise under the gun to 1,300. A player who was so active calling and raising almost every single hand preflop, definitely a tournament whale. He makes the call for 1,300. He has a massive stack. I'm directly on his left, and I look down at pocket aces. Since I know the player to my right is gonna call any bet size, so I wanna bet a size that'll hopefully fold out the under the gun player and get as many chips in the middle as I possibly can so we can be all in on flops or turns. So I decide on a raise of 6,000. Sure enough, the under the gun player folds, only the wild player on my right makes the call, so we're going heads up to a flop and he decides to check dark. The flop is jack six seven with two hearts. Because he checked dark, it's now on me, and I have to decide what to do here. SPR is less than two. I have a little over a pot size bet left behind, so at the time I thought I should just jam, but after reviewing this hand later, the correct play is to bet about five big blinds, keep our opponent in there with a wide range, and then shove a lot of turn cards so we could extract more value from our opponent. Instead, I do shove, and he thinks for quite a while, and then makes the fold, but a little misstep there, and we could have extracted a little bit more value from our opponent. Instead, Instead, we forced him to fold a very wide range that probably missed that flop a lot of the time. So lesson learned, and I'm happy that these spots come up so I can get better and choose the correct option the next time around. So at this point in the tournament, I have about 30,000 chips and blinds are 400, 800. Stacks are getting shallower, so I'm under the gun and look down at ace queen offsuit and I think it's perfectly fine to go a 2x sizing here, so I raise it up to 1600. Middle position calls and the big blind calls, so we're going three ways to a flop of ace, eight, four with two clubs. They check it over to me and I bet 2200. I get one caller in middle position, so we're headed to a turn card, which is the jack of hearts. We're still at the top of our range and we want to deny equity to flush draws and get value from worse aces and worse pairs so I put out a bet of 5,000. He doesn't think very long before putting in the fold but we do chip up here a little bit. And blinds are 600, 1200 and I have about 40,000 to start the hand. It folds to me in the hijack and I look down at ace queen offsuit and I raise it up to 3,500. The guy to my left who is very active trying to find a spot to double up, he makes the call and the big blind decides to shove all in for his tournament life and he has about the same stack as I do. In different tournaments and different player pools, ace queen offsuit can definitely be a call off here if I think the big blind is trying to take advantage of a spot if he has a wide three bet shove range from the big blind. But in most cases in tournaments like these, players just have super premium hands in this spot. We're either flipping for our tournament life or we're absolutely crushed by a hand like ace king. So I decide to put in the fold. I think if I'm suited, I can consider calling off here, but I do indeed make the fold. My opponent to my left makes the call and he has jack nine of hearts and the big blind indeed had ace-king offsuit, so we did avoid a spot where we were absolutely dominated. All right, so we are on break here at this bounty tournament. We are 58 total entries. We're down to 47, and I had around 39,000 and chose to do the add-on. So for $160, I got an extra 30K in chips. So we definitely have a shot of final tabling this thing. So let's see if we can run up a stack and I couldn't make it that easy for them to grab my bounty. So I had to add some chips on. I'm having a great time overall. It's been super fun. So let's see if we can run it up. In this hand, blinds are 1,000, 2,000 with a big blind Annie of 2,000 and I have 25 big blinds to start the hand. It folds around to the button who's a younger MTT competent player who plays a lot of MTTs online and he raises to 4,500. The small blind, the guy to my right who was playing wild and involved in a lot of hands, he makes the call. 
I look down at Ace-10 offsuit in the big blind, and these are one of those spots where I'm trying to get better at taking the aggressive route and leveraging stacks towards the middle stages of a tournament when accumulating a lot of chips is extremely powerful. This is a great spot to put in the shove with our 25 big blinds as we can get a ton of folds from the button and the small blind should not have a strong hand at all a lot of the time here so it's a great spot to pick up some big blinds and if we get called we're most likely a 60% favorite against most hands we get called by. So I do decide to shove all in for my 25 big blinds and with a bounty on my head the button decided to make the call the small blind folds and so we're off to the races and about a 60% favorite to win this hand as my opponent has king jack offsuit and here's what happened. In a PKO. Yeah. In a PKO. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just Yeah. You are 200 bucks rich. All right, well, unfortunately, I am out of the $5,200 tournament. Found a sweet spot where the button, who is a competent tournament player, a young young guy, I won't call him a kid, <laughs> young young guy, uh, raises to 4,500. Blinds are 1,000, 2,000, 2,000. Small blind who's been playing almost every hand. He calls. I look down at ace 10 offsuit in the big blind, and I rip for about 25 bigs. I get snapped by the button who has king, jack, and uh, flop looks great, but unfortunately a jack on the turn. And if I would have won that hand, I would have doubled up to over 50 bigs, been super healthy, but unfortunately we could not win the 60-40. So super fun tournament, super happy that I was able to play a tournament while I'm here because I love them. And uh, I'm honestly exhausted. I would love to get some sleep tonight and come back to play the last live stream and the last day tomorrow in Austin.